Greetings, I'm the dentist. Welcome back to Dent Agenda. This is Chapter 3, Pediatric Dentistry. These are the points included in this chapter video series, and in this tutorial, we will discuss restoration of carious primary teeth. Before you commence any treatment, always make an accurate preoperative examination, including appropriate tradiographs, and a detailed treatment plan is essential. These are the points we're going to go through in this video. Starting with isolation, which is a crucial step before placing any filling. Ideally, a rubber dam should be used routinely for restorative procedures. It does not only protect the airway, but also improves moisture control, visibility, and aids in patient management. It is essential for all root canal and bulb therapy for permanent teeth, of course, and is advisable for restoring primary teeth. If placement of a rubber dam is not possible for whatever reason, plastic disposable salivary ejectors are better tolerated than metal flange types. Also, cotton placement could be helpful, especially when working on the lower arch. An open bite block could be useful in some cases as well. Now to the instruments you're going to use. Always have a selection of both high and low speed burrs. For access opening, use a small burr and for carous removal, use a larger round burr which fits into the cavity. Some children are apprehensive of the aspiration tips. Make use of a high speed water cooled hand pieces difficult. Others would find the vibration of the slow speed hand pieces distressing and may confuse it with pain. In these cases, distraction or counting like if you tell the child, I'll count to 10 or to 5 each time and I'll stop, can help you. Occasionally, it's possible but time consuming to complete cavity preparation with hand instruments like excavators. A miniature head handpiece is invaluable and quite helpful with children. Moving on to the material selection for intracoronal restorations, starting with glass ion immersion mounts. It has advantages of adhesion directly to the tooth dentine. Fluoride release, which helps in remineralization and caries prevention. It is useful in non load bearing class 3 and 5 cavities and for temporization of primary teeth in non cooperative children as well as in teeth near to exfoliation. Despite all that, glass ionomer cements are more technique sensitive and less wear resistant than other felling materials like amalgam. Now to the improved form of glass ionomer cements, which is the resin modified glass ionomer. It was created by the addition of resin into the glass ionomer cement. The makeup is fundamentally 80% glass ionomer along with 20% resin. This has been demonstrated to have excellent performance in primary teeth. They have many advantages. Number one, their abrasion resistance is superior to those of conventional glass enamers. Number two, they have superior aesthetic features. Number three, they are more resistant to water pollution in the setting reaction. Number four, they are simple to use and to mix. And number five, they have a sufficiently low film breadth. On the other hand, the most significant disadvantage of resin-added ionomers is that they have hydrophilic quality water absorption plasticity as well as hygroscopic growth is augmented. 
not appropriate to utilize in cementation of complete ceramic restorations, but they may be employed in cementation of metal or metal porcelain crowns and bridges. They can also be used with composite along with glass enema cores, as well as a base matter beneath composite fillings. They have diverse types that can be used in orthodontics as well. Finally, these resin added glass enamers are obtained in the market in two forms, as a powder liquid and as an auto mixing capsules. Compomers. Compomer is a modified composite type material with some of the properties of glass and cement, so it's a hybrid of two dental materials, dental composites and glass enamers. They were invented in an effort to combine the desirable properties of both materials. The aesthetic of dental composites, since they are white and closely mimic tooth tissues, so can camouflage into a tooth very well and the fluoride releasing ability of glass enamer cements, which helps to prevent further tooth decay. They are more technique and moisture sensitive than amalgam, but studies suggest similar longevity. Now to the most widely used dental filling material nowadays, which is composite resin. Early studies suggest poor performance in primary teeth, but modern materials placed with good isolation like rubber dam perform as well or even better than amalgam, but it takes longer to place in children. Dental composites have many advantages. They look more aesthetically pleasing than all other filling materials. They require less drilling, so not as much tooth structure need to be removed since it bonds to the tooth chemically and not mechanically. They harden in seconds instead of days like other materials because it polymerize using the UV light. They bond to the tooth, giving it greater strength when helps to prevent breakage. They can also be repaired if damaged quite easily without having to remove all the bulk of the old filling. On the other hand, Dental composites have many disadvantages. They are technique sensitive and require complete isolation. You may experience some brief tooth sensitivity following the procedure of composite material placement. They tend to wear out sooner than metal fillings, especially if you have heavy wear from grinding and chewing. They may stain and change color from frequent and prolonged exposure to coffee or tea and other foods or drinks with staining properties. They are more expensive than silver fillings and if done improperly, especially in class 2 and 5, gums may become inflamed. Plastic fillings. No dental fillings are made from 100% plastic, but some fillings consist of composite of both plastic and resin. The resin gives the filling a pleasing natural appearance that blends in with the tooth. They are also referred to as white fillings or tooth colored fillings. Resin composite fillings are good looking but generally not used on rear molars since there is a higher risk they may wear out. Perform best in primary molars with small class 1 and 2 cavities. Now to the oldest filling of all of them, which is the amalgam. Because of concerns about toxicity and environmental pollution, plus the availability of alternative materials, amalgam is less frequently used nowadays but it still had many advantages. It is a durable material. It withstands a lot of wear and tear forces. It's affordable. It protects from 
future cavities because the edges of the tooth next to the filling become more resistant to the future cavities. Less breaking the filling as compared to other options such as ceramic or composite fillings. But it also had many disadvantages. It can cause tooth discoloration. Amalgam fillings are usually silver that can get darker over time. It can cause sensitive teeth. A lot of people have reported that they feel increased tooth sensitivity after getting amalgam fillings. Some scientific evidence suggests that this could be due to the metal reaction to varying temperatures in the mouth. It can weaken the tooth. Another major concern of amalgam filling is that they can weaken the tooth structure. This usually happens because a portion of some tissue of the tooth has to be removed first in order to install these fillings because it holds mechanically to the tooth. Your teeth may get stained and the gingiva that touches the filling as well, causing what's so-called amalgam tattoos. The European Parliament agreed on the 14th of March 2017 to the final version of its regulation on mercury since it is included in amalgam. This stipulates that amalgam is not to be used for treatment of primary molars in children under the age of 15 years or in pregnant and breastfeeding women, except when strictly deemed necessary by the practitioner on the ground of specific medical needs of the patient. However, many clinicians outside Europe still consider amalgam to be an acceptable and durable material for restoring class 1 and 2 cavities in primary molars. Stainless steel crowns. They give superior longevity where lesions are more extensive. But this will be discussed in details in an upcoming video. Moving on to the principles you should keep in mind while cavity design. Starting with the outline. The outline form should include any undermined unsupported enamel. Extension for prevention is now outmoded, but any suspect adjacent fissures should be included in the cavity. Do not cross transverse marginal ridges unless they are undermined, not to weaken the remaining tooth structure. Caris should be excavated from the amelodentinal junction first. Then progress to carefully removing the caris from the floor. If necessary, you may need to re-establish the outline form to improve access to ensure the amelodentinal junction is caries-free since it is the most sensitive area in the cavity. Resistance form and retention form. They are not as crucial with adhesive materials since they bond to the tooth chemically and not mechanically. But ensuring reasonable resistance form is of value in load-bearing situations. A proximal caries. Cut down through the marginal ridge to allow access for caries removal. Ideally, the box should extend into the embrasures only and the walls of the box should converge occlusally so the box is wider at the base than at the occlusal level which gives more retention to the filling material. In larger cavities, an excavator or large round bag can be used to start caries removal from the walls. Any undermined enamel should be completely cut back. If caries is deep, stop and reassess whether pulpotomy is required or not. If outlined form extends beyond acceptable limits, consider stainless steel crowns, especially in class 2 cavities in children. Check retention 
and that the walls are all carous free. Last but not least, wash and dry the cavity, but never over dry. Then line with a hard setting calcium hydroxide if you're going to fill the cavity with amalgam. Finally, check occlusion and remove any high points to prevent discomfort and filling fracture and smooth and polish the filling. Now let's go through some reasons for failure of restorations in primary teeth. Number one, recurrent caries, often due to failure to adequately complete caries removal. Because of many reasons like flagging patient cooperation or failure to use adequate local anesthesia. Number two, if unable to finish cavity, it is better to place a temporary dressing of glass and cement and try again on another visit. Number three, cavity preparation does not satisfy the mechanical requirement of the filling material. Number four, inadequate moisture control, especially with glass and cements, compomers and composites. Number five, presence of occlusal high spots. There are many others, but these are the most common reasons for failure of restorations. Here are some useful tips and tricks. Let the child participate by looking after the saliva ejector or the cotton wool. If the child is nervous, give them some control by asking them to signal by raising their hands if they want you to stop. If the child's cooperation runs out before the cavity is completed, try and ensure all caries is removed from the amelodontinal junction to prevent sensitivity and place a dressing of either zinc oxide or glass ionomer. This should suffice for several visits until you're ready to try again. Local anesthesia. It's easier to give in the maxilla, so most advocate starting with the upper tooth. Do not try to do too much at one visit. Plan the treatment at a pace that child can accept. Most importantly, communicate with your patient. It's important to explain to the child what you're going to do, why you're doing it, in terms that they will understand easily. It may be helpful to describe some of the instruments that we're going to use, and it can make them seem less threatening to the child. And here are some unthreatening alternatives for dental terms that you can use to explain and describe the instruments to your patients. Always reinforce the good aspects of the child's behavior with praise and possibly with a simple gift like a sticker, badge or a toothbrush. And here you have it all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dentagenda for extra tips and tricks.